Harry Laurent was working as a grocer's assistant in May 1915 when he volunteered to serve with the New Zealand Expeditionary Force. Ten months later, he was on the Western Front as part of the newly formed New Zealand Division and was wounded during the Somme Offensive. After his recovery, he saw action in many well-known Great War battles, such as Messine, Paschendal, and the Hundred Days Offensive. On the 12th of September, following the Second Battle of Bapaume, the Allied forces were pursuing the retreating Germans when Laurent was assigned to lead a 12-man patrol. While out on this mission, a series of events happened that resulted in him being awarded the Victoria Cross. The action was gazetted on the 15th of November and read as follows. For most conspicuous bravery, skill and enterprise when during an attack, he was detailed to exploit an initial success and keep in touch with the enemy. With a party of 12, he located the enemy support line very strongly held and at once charged the position, followed by his men, and completely disorganized the enemy by his sudden onslaught. In the subsequent hand-to-hand fighting which ensued, he showed great resourcefulness in controlling and encouraging his men, and 30 of the enemy having been killed, the remainder surrendered. A total of one officer and 111 other ranks in all. The success of this daring venture, which caused his party four casualties only, was due to his gallantry and enterprise. The month after this action, Laurent was sent to England where he attended officer training school, and by the time he was commissioned in early 1919, the war was over. Along with James Crichton, Reginald Judson and John Grant, Laurent received his Victoria Cross from King George V in a ceremony at Buckingham Palace on the 27th of February 1919. Laurent passed away on the 9th of December 1987 and was the last surviving New Zealand Victoria Cross recipient of the Great War. His medals reside at the Army Memorial Museum in Waudu, New Zealand, and he's memorialised with a street named after him in the town of Hawera, also in New Zealand. 